Hey everyone, now my name is Calvin and welcome to my little iPad video tutorial here where I'm going to show you how to use my watercolor add-on for Procreate. Uh, the first thing you need to do is download the actual product folder onto your iPad. Uh, it's going to be a zip file and uh, I recommend just logging into whatever account you use to purchase the add-on and just downloading it directly to your iPad uh, that way. Just make sure your screen stays on because if you turn off the screen while it's downloading something, it'll just cancel the download. But uh, once it's all downloaded, go to your file manager and uh, try to locate that file. Um, I saved it here, watercolor for Procreate, and uh, it's a zip file and you don't have to unzip it. Uh, in, uh, on the iPad, you can just click on a zip file and uh, it'll ask if you want to preview the content and then it will let you kind of peek inside. So inside you'll notice there's a, a bunch of files. Uh, the first one is the brushes. Uh, the second one here is the uh, mockups. And I'll show you how to use that in a different video. Just check the description of this video for a little link to that one. Uh, the next one here is the readme. And the uh, last file here is the actual template. And uh, the first thing you need to do is open up this template. And I think the best way to do that is just uh, while it's highlighted here, while it says procreate document template, uh, just go to the little share icon and it will ask you if you want to copy to Procreate. Uh, just click on that and uh, it should open Procreate automatically. Okay, so it's uh, imported. It's gonna be the first one here with the uh, default sort of flower image. So the next thing we need to load is the brushes. So I'm gonna go back to my file manager uh, and it's gonna open up where we left off, still inside that zip file. And I'm gonna swipe until I see the brushes. Here we go, brushes version 1.5 and I'll do the same thing. I'll do the share and then I'll copy to Procreate. And uh, the brushes should appear on the very top. It's called Aquarelle brushes. And um, on the uh, top layer of this template, like if you go to the layers panel, I included a little uh, cheat sheet for the brushes. So you can just turn that on. And uh, it's just a layer with an image uh, showing all the brushes and uh, what they look like. So this is uh, stippling, mist, soft blotch, sharp round, abstract round, smooth pen, fine liner, pencil, and then the water blender. And uh, here's a little description here that'll just kind of help you remember what each brush is for. But seriously, for 99% of my drawings, I pretty much just stick to these two brushes, the sharp round and the abstract round. And then for blending, I use the uh, watercolor blender. So let's go back to the layers panel and I'll turn off this cheat sheet. I'm also gonna turn off the uh, default flower and uh, I'm gonna select one of these paint here layers and start my uh, little demonstration here. But um, just make sure, it can be any layer you want, just make sure it's underneath the actual texture. Don't put your drawing above this texture layer because then it won't have the texture. It has to be underneath it. So I'm gonna select this one, paint here, and I'll grab the uh, abstract round brush and I'll just make a quick little, uh, like a leaf or a uh, fern or a palm frond, something like that. And I'm just gonna make a uh, quick little stem here. And uh, this brush, uh, the abstract one, is really good at sort of loose watercolor stuff. And uh, you can make some leaves, some really good leaves by just starting out really little and then pressing it and then finishing really little. And it makes a really nice, delicate watercolor leaf. So I'll just add some leaves to this uh, stem here real quickly. Okay, I'm happy with this. And uh, I'm gonna blend some of these uh, hard edges using the water blender tool. You don't ever need to use the smudge tool. Just with the normal brush, just select the water blender and then set the size pretty small, small enough that we can fit it in here and uh, you can just kind of scrub around and uh, it'll blend those colors uh, right together. And uh, just make sure you don't blend everything because in real watercolor, in real life, it does have some hard edges there. That's pretty good. And uh, it's a little bit hard for me to paint because of the angle due to my camera setup, but um, it's much easier to paint this when I can hold the iPad in my hand. Um, for the eraser tool, if you do want to erase, I mean, watercolor does have some sort of natural advantages where it looks nice, even with mistakes. But if you really want to erase stuff, I recommend setting the eraser. Like you can set the brush of the eraser. Uh, go to the aquarelle brushes and set it to this fine liner pen. It has that sort of rough edge and uh, scale it up pretty big. And I really love this one for the eraser because it leaves a nice soft edge there when you sort of make a correction. 
Okay, and that looks pretty good. Now one more thing you might want to do is add some color variation. And the way I do that is with the uh, little selection tool. So if I go to freehand, make sure it's not an automatic or rectangle, make sure it's on freehand. Uh, and then I can just make a, a loose selection and just catch the edges of those leaves. Then I can feather it out. And uh, if you go to the uh, adjustments and go to hue, saturation and brightness, you can just sort of shift the hue to a little different color and uh, darken it up as well. And uh, maybe increase the saturation, that's good. And I'll just do that a few times and kind of fade in uh, some unique colors to give this a little more of a natural look. Now for the veins of this, I recommend making a new layer. Uh, the same color is fine, just change the layer transparency to multiply. And then back in the brushes, uh, for the uh, veins, I recommend either using the sharp round or the smooth pen. I think I'll use the sharp round and just make it really small, something like that. Then that's good. Okay, so I'll just do some quick leaf veins here. And uh, I'll fade that just so it's barely there, I like that look. Now you can export this just like you would anything else in Procreate, but uh, you might not be able to tell on the video, but the background here has a paper texture. And uh, I did include an option where you can just export the watercolor with just a pure white background. And to uh, set that up, go to the layers panel and then open up the uh, watercolor texture. And uh, you'll see the first one inside that folder is called paper background. Just turn that off, and then right underneath it, you'll see no background option. Just flip that one on. And when you wanna undo that, just do the exact opposite. Turn the no background off, and turn the paper background on. So I wanna export it just as pure white. So now when I look at the background, it's pure white, but my watercolor painting here still has all the uh, texture. Um, so I can just go over here to the wrench, and just do share, and then JPEG, and then just uh, save it to files just like that. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial. This is just a real quick walkthrough to get you started, but uh, check in the description of this video and uh, I'll post links uh, as I create more videos showing a little bit about my technique, uh, different projects that I'm working on, and uh, that'll help you sort of learn a little bit more about how to use all the brushes and the textures that this little add-on has to offer. But uh, if you have any questions or comments, just leave a comment on this video, or better yet, just send me an uh, email. Uh, I put my email address in the readme file that we saw earlier. Just send an email to that and I'll get right back to you in a day or so. But uh, other than that, guys, thank you so much for your support and thanks for watching.